7 a.m., the morning of Wednesday, September 30th, 1981. Dawn revealed clouds, but no rain and very little wind. For seven days, wind and poor visibility had prevented the laying of the world's first submarine fiber optic cable. After days of waiting, the weather had finally broken. The people and equipment were all in place, and district manager Dick Carver gave the go-ahead. The cable lay began on the east side of Lake Washington near Bellevue and crossed to Seattle on the west side, a total distance of approximately two miles. Eventually, the submarine portion of the cable will be only one leg of a 78-mile light wave project. 7.28 a.m., and work had begun. A diver entered the water. A steel pulling cable has been fed out through the underwater conduit. After being connected by the diver, the steel line was pulled to the barge. Once aboard, it was attached to the fiber optic cable. The fiber optic cable is unique in a number of ways. Well, essentially, this cable is the first actual submarine cable uh, that contains fiber optic uh, or optical fibers that's being installed in the United States. Uh, each, cable, or each cable consists of uh, 35 hair-thin optical fibers. Uh, the fibers are approximately 10 one-thousandths of an inch in diameter, and they are continuous end-to-end. -end. It's an 11,000-foot-long cable. Well, the, uh, the one I have in my right hand here is, uh, is the 200-pair lead cable, uh, lead sheath with copper wires and the steel armor wire around it. The, uh, the difference in size is uh, very considerable, as you can see. The uh, new cable weighs uh, uh, three-quarters of a pound per foot, and the other weighs 15, 20 pounds per foot. 8.33 a.m. on the barge. Under district manager Dick Carver's careful supervision, the steel pulling line has been connected to the fiber optic cable. As a pulling truck ashore reeled the cable in, the crew on the tug carefully fed it into the water. Under the surface, the diver monitored the cable's progress as it fed into two-inch plastic inner duct within a six-inch conduit. There it goes. From the mouth of the conduit, the cable was pulled up through a manhole on shore. After an appropriate length of cable had been pulled in, it was tied off and left for future splicing. The splicing is performed using uh, an electric arc. The fibers are essentially aligned under a microscope and are fused together with a 2,000 degree, uh, the 2,000 degree heat of an electrical arc. 9.12 a.m. The cable has been secured ashore and the critical passage across the lake began. They essentially have uh, a 500 foot right of way here across the lake and that's laid out for 10 cables. Uh, the two fiber optic cables that are going to be installed are on either side of that, uh, that right-of-way. So they, uh, each cable will be 500 foot from, uh, from the other. And that's being done to, once again, try to, try to protect the route. If one gets damaged, uh, you have the other cable to fall back on. Continual monitoring of the tug and barge's position was required. Visual sightings were taken using transits placed on both shores. Aboard the tug, electronic surveying equipment provided a continuous reading on the course of tug and barge. Here we have the uh, mini ranger. The bottom dial is indicating now that we're 50% of our lay across. That's 50% of the way. We're about a mile across. We're, we're right in the center of the lake. The top dial is giving us the, the uh, footage off of the center line of the theoretical lay and right now we're right on we've had a good lay all the way across 10 21 a.m dick carver watched as the tug and barge continued their careful progress if the tug and barge had moved too fast the slender light wave cable might have broken in spite of its steel wire armor for that reason the tug and barge moved along at a little under one knot since each cable is worth two hundred and thirty thousand dollars a mistake would be costly. Meanwhile, AT&T's John Lemunyan watched intently, hoping to apply experience gained here to a river a continent away. The Potomac uh, crossing is uh, 
uh, roughly uh, three miles, uh, which would be comparable to this, the, the, the uh, uh, shore to shore crossing. 11.19 a.m. Both tug and barge have safely made the crossing. Then the remaining length of cable was figure aided on the deck of the barge in order to gain access to the cable end. The figure aiding process required special care to avoid any possibility of a break. 12.58 p.m. The cable has been successfully figure aided, connected to steel pulling cable and guided through the underwater conduit by the diver. Ashore, a crew pull a cable up through a manhole. The world's first submarine fiber optic lay was complete. Two days later, the same people would do it all over again as a second cable went down. Back aboard the tug, Dick Carver reflected on the past and looked to the future. It's a challenge, and it makes me feel like I'm kind of sorry the 41 years is over. I'd like to be here and see the new things as they come along.